Thank you Thank so you. much, Natasha. Thank you for having us back. I mean, this is incredible. We, this is our third cooking demonstration with Adios Francaise, and it's such a wonderful thing to come out of a time. Um, there was so much tumultuous things happening at, uh, in the past year with COVID, and uh, the fact that we started these cooking demonstrations, I'm just so excited to be here again. Um, and thank you to everyone who's back for a second or third time. It's amazing, and I love receiving your comments. So please do um, screen, screen, screenshot, sorry, and share, um, and ask me your questions as we go along, and please do send me the photos of your finished product. We love to see it. Um, it really makes us happy to see how you are recreating the recipes at home and often you'll make your own little twist to it, um, just like we do. So this recipe, Tokyo Vin, um, first started when we were living in Antibes. We've lived in, we lived in the south of France for eight years together and our first apartment had a tiny, tiny little kitchen that would be equivalent to an airplane kitchen. It was absolutely minuscule and we had a toaster oven in which we were using as our only oven and uh, I wanted to recreate Thanksgiving. And, um, and, you know, of course, Thanksgiving is not celebrated in the South of France, but it was imp important to me. And so my husband started proposing to do Thanksgiving, but he cuts the turkey into pieces and roasts the turkey in different ways. And every year we were experimenting with something different. Um, and I believe it was in Montreal the very first time that we did Tokyo Vin. Um, and I absolutely loved the result. At first, I was kind of uh, hesitant to it let him take over my Thanksgiving meal. Um, but absolutely no one who was invited complained. Um, and so, so it's a new tradition was born for us. And this turkey au vin method um, is really tasty and has uh, old world French um, culinary techniques and mixed with new modern styles of, of cooking. And what's most important to me and anything that is on our blog is I make French cooking simple. Um, and that's really important to me that you'd be able to cook this recipe while you have kids that are underfoot, while you um, are preparing for a dinner party that evening, while you have lots of things that are going on, you may be working at the same time. Um, that's really the, the key with the chef's wife recipes is that you're able to do them um, while lots of things are going on uh, in your life. It's just like for us, we have two kids that are under the age of four. Our daughter just turned four years old. And our, our son, Pierre, he is 14 months now. He's always participated in every single uh, cooking demonstration that we've done. However, this time, very fortunately, we have a babysitter with us um, because at the age of 14 months, he is into everything. And it was just not envisageable at all to have him with us. <laughs> um, so we were going to, in the recipe, it calls for pieces of turkey. And earlier, Sebastian was going to cut up the turkey and then we were gonna use the pieces, but we figured you might actually like to see what it's like to, um, as Sebastian says, cassian dans, which means break apart the turkey. Uh, so we're gonna start with that. Yeah. So, I'm gonna move the camera down here for you. <laughs> How many pounds is this turkey been? With a, a supplier of D'Artagnan. It's a uh, heritage, you know, it's very nice. Let's, let's go. So these are your chef knives that I have never actually touched because mm -hmm. it is bad luck to touch them. On commence avec le pilon. First start with the wing. En anglais, mon amour. Wing. You just crack like that. So you're just putting your knife right yeah. at the wing, um, yeah. at the joint of the wing. Yeah. The show is crack, no? You don't want to go uh, too strong because you don't want to poop it. Sebastian is always fearful that I will cut myself in the kitchen. I have never cut myself in the kitchen yet, and I'm touching wood, um, but he is always, knife safety is a huge mm. thing for him. Don't you want to cut home? We are just going to follow. Here the lid, you know, up, autour. So just under the socket, I guess? A small knife, you know, because it came directly, you see? And after, you know, when it's open, you know, here, you don't have any more joint, you just have to pull. Does that mean here? Like that, you pull, and it's already came here. After, you just have to follow to the bone, And that's it. 
Let me show you the other side. You open. Peut-être que les blancs la prochaine fois. Mm -hmm. Voilà. It's very easy. You make it look easy. Well, it's very easy. It intimidates the heck out of me, but for, for the white, you know, you just have to follow the bone. Be careful when you put the knife like that with your hand. You know, it's it's need to be you know between this like that. You know, you just follow the bone. For the white, you know, and it's very, very easy. It does look effortless, but I'm sure I, I, you I, need I'm, practice. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to, I'm going very slowly, you know, just to show that it, it can be done, you know, it's, come on, this uh, En français, c'est quoi? C'est pas rébarbatif, c'est pas, il faut doucement. Just slowly. And here you have the white, you know. The all white is very, very simple. That is a huge press. I mean, you could use a turkey and have meals for how many weeks? Yeah, you can fr freeze it, you know. Melanie noticed how sharp the knife is. I totally agree. And I know they're very special knives, probably brought from France, right? Um, Milan, you're asking if you have a cutlery on your block. I think you do, right? Yes, or... I do. I have um, a list of essential cooking uh, utensils that you need. That's actually one of the highlighted posts on my blog on the first page. Um, now, Sebastian's knives are sabatier, which are hand forged in France. Uh, his knives, he's, he's had them since you were how old? Since I start to work, 14 years old, if you can see, because normally this one, well, it was big like that. Now it's smaller. At what point do you retire that knife? What's it? <laughs> How much um, do your knives cost? If you were to buy these now? Oh, this this one I bought them, you know, when, when uh, I was a trainee, you know, in France, we start to train like the army, we don't have too much money, you know, and this one I pay this probably, at the time, you know, it was uh, 50 francs, 50 francs. Now it's, uh, why, eight, eight euro? Eight euros? Yes, ten dollars, you know, this one, yeah. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. So what's an important thing? It's, it's you're, you need to look for a stainless steel knife, right? Yes. It has to be 100% stainless steel. Yeah. And you don't like a wood handle because it doesn't, it cracks under the Yeah, the Japanese knife, you know, they, they like wood handle. But this one, you know, it's... We love to wash them often, you know, mm. because when you do meat like that, you know, it's. So thank you for cutting the thigh away from the um, leg for me, because we're going to sear the meat in the Dutch oven that I have there. And yeah. turkey pieces are so huge. Um, we're going to probably do it in two different batches. And how many people do you think this will feed? This is uh, the one portion we have. It's for four people, you know, it's okay, really so nice, four. you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But this turkey, you know, it's for eight to yeah. 12, you know, depending on you know, the size, if, if, if it's 12, 18, 16 yeah. or 20 pounds. This one, 20 pounds, you know, we can easily, you know, have this for uh, for 12 people, mm -hmm. 10 people, it's nice. Bien dire bonjour. Bonjour. Bien dire bonjour, Valentine. Bien dire bonjour. Bien dire bonjour. Je pense qu'il y a Nani sur la belle. Bonjour. Bonjour, Valentina. Bonjour. Ah, oh, il y a petit Pierre aussi. OK, tu vas jouer? Jouer, jouer. When we have done the turkey, you know, it's important to always change the board, you know, to be sure it's, it's stay clean because we are going to cut vegetable on it and we don't want to have, you know, the, the juice of the turkey. So for those who have been following along in our cooking classes all year long, as you can see, Pierre is getting much bigger. Um, he was a little baby infant when we started the cooking demonstrations with Adios Francaise, and now he is 14 months, and he walks so solidly and so strongly, and uh, yeah, he's a, he's a joy. He just wake up? He just woke up. 
guest, Melanie. He loves to eat. My son has the most incredible, insatiable ap appetite ever. Um, he will eat more than an adult will eat. As long as I keep on giving him food, he will continue to eat. Um, so yeah, we call him Petit Pierre because when he was born, he was very small or smaller than our daughter. Um, he was born at seven pounds and my daughter was 8.3 pounds. So we call him Petit Pierre, but I have a feeling that he may be the biggest in the family. So we'll see about Petit Pierre. Okay, je peux commencer? Okay, um, first thing first, because we're going to serve mashed potatoes with our coco vin. Um, we're going to put the potatoes to cook. Now in normal times, uh, you wouldn't have to do this right away because the coco vin takes two hours to cook uh, in the oven. But as we are going to rely on the magic of TV cooking, um, uh, we're going to have a coco vin. We have a coco vin that we already made, or sorry, turkey vin that we already made that we'll be able to show you. So we're going to start the potatoes right now anyways. Um, something very important is that you always start potatoes in cold water. So Sebastian just filled up this pot. There's uh, six eight potatoes in here. Um, and we're gonna make mashed potatoes, putting them on high heat, um, starting them in cold water. And why do we start them in cold water, I would think? Because you, you want to have the starch, you know, stay inside and you don't want to have la, la puree tiré. Right. This is why uh, when you make a puree, you know, if you don't have enough water or too much potatoes, you know, in the water, it's like the same uh, thing like the pasta, you know? We think that if you put olive oil in the pasta, they are not going to have uh, to be together. But the true story is that if you use, you know, more water than the pasta, for example, two liters for 100 grams of pasta, they, they are never together. You know, the same for the potatoes. Not too much potatoes on the pan, a lot of water. And always cold. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. D'avoir cassé le dent. J'apprécie. So for those, uh, okay. Let me move this over here. Je vais poser ça ici, pour qu'on puisse voir. Elle est lourde. Merci, mon amour. Et celui-là, c'est pour la sauce? Mm -hmm. Super, c'est pour toi. He's like the best sous chef in the whole wide world. I have to say, I'm really appreciating um, cooking with him because he always anticipates everything that I need to do. And he is my safety net. And he's never let me burn anything yet. Or, and I can get sometimes distracted, especially when I'm talking. Um, but he's always there and he's catching me as I am cooking. And I love that. Um, so we're gonna start with the sear. Um, to have a sear, I'm not gonna put it up to very high heat. I'm gonna put it to medium high heat. Uh, and a question that people often ask is about our oven. We use an induction oven and we absolutely love it. We will actually not go back to gas. Um, we feel that it's safer in the house and also that, uh, because we don't have a commercial um, oh, we don't have a commercial ventilation system. And, uh, and also we love that the surface stays cool for our kids that are very young and that you can boil a pot of water for pasta very, very quickly. Um, so yes, we do love our induction oven. And this is not even a very fancy induction oven. It is a profile by IG. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is I'm going to salt the turkey that Sebastian cut up. Um, put a generous amount of salt over the top, over the skin. Someone has a question uh, that, mm -hmm. so the recipe calls for thighs and legs. Yes. But I only have thighs and half breast. Shall I keep the half breast whole since it cooks faster than the thighs or shall I cut half breast in two or three pieces? Cut it in two or three pieces and we're gonna treat it a little bit differently. It's not gonna go in the oven at the same time. Um, and we'll show you because we did the same thing too. We used a breast. Yeah, so I'm going to put this in. Yeah, we want to show you. Côté pro, côté wait, pro. wait, mais il n'est pas assez chaud. I have to wait one minute. Um, Sebastian is reminding me, always put the skin side down first um, because that's really where you get the nice car caramelization. If, if the pan is too small, it's good that, that you just seal them first. You can reserve here on the side, you know, and after do the process in two times to be sure they have a nice coloration. Yeah, you don't want to crowd um, the turkey in there. Uh, so I'm going to do two by two. I put the two legs in, and then I'm going to put the thighs in. If you're a good... Wait. 
if you are doing uh, the breast, so what we suggest is that you cook it and you cut it into smaller pieces, like still like steaks like this, right? Um, and then you would put it in to the oven one hour in. So it would only require half of the cooking time as the dark meat. And this is what the thigh looks like here. So it's just the top joint of the leg. I think I'll have to update my kitchens. Is it possible to do that at all if you don't have a Dutch oven? Of course. Yeah, you don't need to do this um, in the Dutch oven. Uh, you could do it in a frying pan and mm -hmm. then put it into a baking dish. Um, okay. But you should have a dish that is deep so that the liquid mm -hmm. can be used. So the technique that we're using is a French technique called braising, um, mm -hmm. where it is, it's kind of like stewing, but with less liquid. So it's a mixture mm -hmm. of steam, liquid, uh, and heat in the oven, which I love because it's one of the most fail, uh, fail proof ways of cooking. Um, mm -hmm. So it's really nice. It takes the stress off if you're doing a dinner party. You can do this in advance, put the turkey oven in the oven or the cook oven. Um, Thank you. We have someone from far away from hello from Austin, Texas. Oh, really? Hi. Yes. <laughs> I love Austin. Austin is such a cool city. Great food on South Congress. And barbecue. I really want to take uh, Sebastian to Texas to taste real barbecue. I love barbecue. He loves barbecue. We're going to need to do a barbecue trip. Yes, sir. You'll need a trip to Texas, yes. And someone else is asking, uh, what is uh, Chef Sebastian's favorite dish to make? Oh, that's really an easy question. La bouillabaisse. The traditional soup yes. from Marseille. Uh, with all of the nice things, you know, and the roux on the side, and the garlic confit, it's magnificent. Mm -hmm. right. Wait. Okay. So he put the, the thigh and skin down again. So to show you, this is what the legs look like right now. Mm -hmm. So they've got a nice coloration on the top. Um, and it's just starting to really sear in the pan. So you're not looking to cook them. You're just like, you're looking to get uh, the flavor off the turkey skin um, on the bottom of the pan. Thank you. Wow, we are really covering the whole country today. Uh, even almost the whole continent. We have people from Los Angeles, from Baltimore, from Mississippi. Hello, thank you for joining. I, this, I mean, this is absolutely incredible to me because this is an Alliance Française Washington DC chapter cooking class um, and that people are signing in from all over the world. I think it's just absolutely extraordinary. So thank you very much for being with us. Um, and feel free to ask questions as we go along, even if, if it's not to do with this recipe. Um, we're happy to answer as we go. I'm going to take you over here to, to really take a look at this because this is really pretty. Can you see? So you're getting really nice coloration in the in the Dutch oven here. Be nice, looks. And the kitchen is starting to smell really nice, but we have not put onions, garlic, anything else like that in the um uh in the pan. No, no, pizza, pizza, pizza. <laughs> Mm, we have a question. Uh, the turkey legs looked, uh, they were elevated on a pan. When did you yes. place the legs in the bottom? Uh, so we, I'm not sure I understand the question. We seared the legs first, and then we put them on this. This is just a pie plate that I have. Then we put a round cooling rack on top of it so that the juices run down because we don't need a lot of fat in the dish. Mm -hmm. So we sear the legs in the Dutch oven first. Those are the first things that we sear. And we're just doing them two by two. Although this is more meat than I can ever fit in there. This is more meat than the recipe calls for because we of course used the big turkey that we just cut up in front of you. Um, 
Wait, okay. Because one of you are cooking with the with the breast, we're also going to show you the breast as well. Yes. Um, but not all of it is going to go in the Dutch oven because my Dutch oven is not that yeah. big. If you have the whole turkey, don't tell me you can keep this for later. Mm -hmm. We are going to show you with the breast in case you want to put some breast on it. No problem. We are in life. Okay. 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 So, uh, Anina Bed, just to have it straight. So, first you are searing in the Dutch oven just to get the crispy skin, right? Then you're yes. sort of uh, dripping the oils a little bit, right? And then you will be cooking, putting it all together back into the Dutch oven, right? To continue yes. the recipe. Exactly. Okay. Um, so we're just getting the sear first. And then this is what's great about Dutch ovens is that we can sear on the um, stove top. And then we're going to put the, we're going to start the garnish um, and the sauce. And we're going to put uh, everything back in the pot in the Dutch oven. And then the entire thing goes in the oven. So I like that it doesn't use every single pan in the house. Um, so Sebastian is cutting up the bread. So it's really more pain. He's going to show you and the how to cut the breast. Also, another question. Mm -hmm. Is All it right. okay to cook wings uh, with the legs? We did put the wings in there too. This is what the wing looks like. Oh, but you cut off like the skinny part, right? The very end of it. No? Yes, drop the tiny little skinny part. Yes, yes we did. <laughs> you, don't, you don't have to, I don't think so. Yeah, you can, you can keep it. You, you can keep it on. Yeah, the wonderful thing about the braising technique is that it's not a precise science in the sense that even if you left it in the oven for three hours, it would still be delicious and the meat would fall off the bone. You just have to make sure that there's always some liquid in the pot. Um, if you've watched the Julia and Ju or Julie and Julia video, um, the movie that came out in the early 2000s, that is one of my favorite movies of all time. Uh, the reason that she burns her bush bourguignon is that she left it in the oven all night long and that there weren't there wasn't any more liquid in the pot. As long as there's liquid in the pot, you are not going to burn this dish. And so this is really a, a great dish for that. Okay, one day more. Chef is saying we need to go. We need to so work. I'm going to turn the heat back on. And this is what's really important is that you get uh, the caramelization that's at the bottom of this pan. Very important, very, very important. This is how you get the flavor. So there's caramelization at the bottom of the pan like this. Um, and the oil is in there. I'm going to leave it in there. And I'm going to bring the heat back up. But not too high because you don't want the oil to smoke. Um, you just want it to be nice and hot. And then I'm actually going to deglaze the pan with water, so one cup of water here. And I have a, uh, you can use a wooden spoon. Um, this is a plastic spoon, I guess. Mat fer, yeah. Um, and I'm gonna use it to scrape the bottom of the pan to get all those like, those bits of turkey skin that are stuck in the bottom of the pan. Um, so, I put the water right in and I'm going to let it come up to an evolution. Is that an English word? A little, a little simmer. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I'm going to throw in the aromatic garnish. So the aromatic garnish is what you use, what uh, we're going to use to um, flavor the... Okay. I'm going to bring this to you. <laughs> so you see it's, it's coming up to a nice boil here. Um, and I'm going to throw in to that the garlic oh. um, and the onions. So the garlic stays with the skin on. This is for, just for flavor. And it's an entire head of garlic, and it'll go in. And then I'm going to cut the onions here and the carrots. I'm going to leave the carrots in big pieces, because if you make them small, you're not going to have, uh, um, they're going to be too. Uh, they're going to melt basically. Um, so here I'm just cutting them into this down here so you can see properly. There we go. Um, I cut them in half. You want to use a finger. So that means not too small, not too big, right? Exactly. Yes. In, 
Le mirepoix. Bigger than le mirepoix, non Dans brunoise, c'est ce Ah, ok. Brunoise, les rissements. Le mirepoix, bigger. bigger. Uh -huh. So, it's two carrots that go in directly. Voilà. And already the smell is amazing because you've got to, um, the juice from the, um, from the turkey. And I'm going to quarter these. These are rather large. So I'm just going to quarter them here. What are these onions? They look very cute and small. <laughs> these are chip, chipolino onions. Um, they are, where did we find them? We found them at Balducci's. Yes, Balducci's. Actually, someone was asking if you have any recommendations as to where to get your turkey and whether there are turkeys which are better than others. As with all meats, there's always turkeys that are better than others. Um, you, if you can get an organic turkey, a mm -hmm. green circle turkey, we love ordering meat off d'Artagnan. D'Artagnan is a... Tu veux expliquer? Yeah, D'Artagnan is a supplier, you know, uh, that exists since 25 years. They are based uh, in uh, New York, you know, and they have a very uh, nice product, you know, because they, they uh, believe, you know, in the, in the chain and, and of the... The, the artisan, this is why, you know, they don't, you know, um, close the gap between the process, you know, and uh, the aliment, you know, the food, mm -hmm. and they, have, uh, they are very respectful, you know, it's very important, you know, for us. And, you know, If you have a local farm, then can absolutely. Deliver. And D'Artagnan can deliver, I think, mm -hmm. uh, To, to home, yeah, I think they can do this. Yeah, check That's online it. because they, they deliver at home. And it, yes, if you have a local farmer, then absolutely um, deliver with a local farmer, or you can go and get from a local farmer. I just have a question about chopping the stems of thyme. Um, and I'm actually not going to do it. I know in the recipe it says to do it, but we've made this recipe now twice this week. And I actually like leaving the entire branch whole because then you can pull it right out. Um, and so I'm going to add it into the pot directly. There's two branches of rosemary. And I'm going to add two big branches of thyme right here. They're going to go right in. And also two bay leaves are going to go right in. Um, and we just realized right before this that we do not have our star anise. So if you have star anise at home and the pot is not empty when you go into the cupboards, then please uh, use one um, head of star anise as well. And I'm going to show you what this looks like too, because this and is I love, very this. Good. I love this. So you can see a little evolution here. Um, and now is when I'm going to add the wine in, which is my favorite part. So you don't have to use a fancy wine here. We're using a Bordeaux, um, but... Uh, we, find, we find this at, at Lidl, you know, it's, it's uh, $9, $9, you know, the bottle, it's... It's a good wine to cook with. Um, yes. Do not use a fancy wine in this dish because you're really, you're cooking You're cooking it out, basically. Um, and I'm going to add the wine directly in. And so if someone has star anise, they should add it too, right? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. This is my my fault, my mistake, because the chef forget to buy anise for you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Speaking of D'Artagnan, someone is sharing uh, the experience that they're actually very good. They deliver on time and the products arrive well packed ah. and fresh. So yeah. just they, they, del they deliver to home. To home, I guess, yes. Nice, mm -hmm. nice, nice. But yeah, it's, it's very good, you know. We, a lot of chefs were using D'Artagnan, you know. Mm. And uh, yeah, Ariane Daguin, um, is a, is a, she's, you know, uh, the founder, you know, of D'Artagnan. And she's also, you know, the daughter of, of Arnaud Daguin, a very renowned uh, chef in the South West, uh, in France. He died uh, two years ago now, mm. but uh, yeah, Michelin star chef that he, he work, you know, a lot for the product. The product. So now we have our um, wine sauce uh, with the aromatics and the, tur and the turkey sear. The technique of searing, I mean, you can use that for every single meat. Okay. It's really very versatile. So we're going to put the meat directly into the, the pan. I'm going to turn the heat off of it. Um, Now, first thing, you always take what is with the bone. So I'm going to take the thigh pieces and I'm going to put it bone down. Um, and that will be covered with the most liquid. Bone down. 
Yeah. Why burn down? Because the liquid, you know, go inside, you know, it will give you a lot of taste. How many pieces can I put in this other one here? Let's see. I don't think I can put the two thighs. Can I? Yes, yes, you can put it. Can I put the two thighs? Yeah. Look at that. This one, this two here. These two on the side? Oh, just one, which one? Just, just one? one. We're choosing which one looks the best. Yes. This one looks pretty good right here. <laughs> We're going to put this in. Um, and this then I'm going to use one yeah. more. Yeah. How long does it take? Yeah. Yeah. And we're going to put this one in right here. So I'm going to show you again here. And we're not going to add any more liquid. Um, so this is what it's going to look like before you put it in the oven. So as you can see, there is um, liquid just like one quarter of the pot, and then the meat is directly into it. And we're going to turn it um, about halfway through as well. There we go. Which you don't. I mean, I have not always done. Um, you don't have to necessarily. You don't have to. But. Est-ce que tu veux faire les blancs après? I don't think we will have time to do the white. Um, he's thrown me a curveball with this entire big turkey piece. Um, the recipe, as it's written, is really just for the thighs and the uh, legs, but if, we're going to put it in the oven. If, if, you, uh, if you put the breast, you know, you can put this, you know, at the middle of the cooking. So those of you who are using the breast, um, I wouldn't put it in the Dutch oven right now with the legs or the thighs. I would put it in halfway through. Um, and make sure that you take the legs and the thighs out, put the breast in on the bottom so that it gets most of the dark wine color, and then put the thighs and legs back on top of them. Because the pieces that are at the bottom will have the deep red wine color. The pieces that are on the top will not, and you want everything to have the same color. So um, if you're doing it with breasts, make sure you take the pieces out and then put it, the breast at the bottom in the submerged in the wine. So there we go. And the pot, I'm going to put the lid directly on, and the entire pot uh, goes into the oven at 350 for two hours. The special can, you remind, can you remind us how much water you used? It was like one cup or something, right? It was one cup and two mm -hmm. cups of wine. One cup of water, two cups of wine. Mm -hmm. And it goes directly in there. And the wonderful thing is I don't have to really touch this for two more hours and it's going to come out and it's going to be amazing. Um, and to show you how amazing it is, deep, deep red wine um, color to it. It just looks absolutely, <laughs> there we go, Natasha. <laughs> um, and with the sauce, oh, and actually, you want to grab a baguette? So I made some baguette to go with this because we just absolutely love the sauce. Um, if you have not tried my baguette recipe, please go on the blog, try baguettes for beginners. It is the easiest baguette recipe. You can do it in under two hours for people that have never, ever made baguettes before in their life. And it makes a really nice crusty baguette like this. I made this at home, in my little yes. oven. And, and it's, um, it's very simple because we are not talking about humidity, you yeah. know, about uh, everything, you know, that you need to add your, your mix. It's, it's for beginners. <laughs> and I want to show you the crust sound, okay? You ready? You get that? <laughs> I love these, I guess. Um, they bring so much joy, and I love that they bring people joy as well. Um, and a really nice uh, deep crust, and it's just absolutely perfect for going directly in the sauce. I can attest, I tried myself, they're great. And it's very simple, very simple recipe. Uh, we have a very like almost emergency question here. Someone is mm -hmm. asking that maybe I misheard. Is it two cups of wine or three cups of wine? It's two cups in the sauce at the beginning, and then we're going to use one cup in the um, sauce at the end. Okay, because so I think someone put three cups of wine already. Shall they take some yeah, out? Two, two for the braising and one for the sauce. You know. Um, tu veux mon amour? Um, yes, I, I, if you have more wine, then just use the mm -hmm. rest of the wine that you have when you're done cooking. Um, I wouldn't take wine out of a sauce. It's not going to make it bad. It's going to still be amazing. Um, 
C'est bon, non? Bravo. Je suis assez contente de moi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I should proud of myself. So that's what it's going to look like in two hours. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the sauce. And est-ce qu'on commence avec la purée ou la sauce? La sauce. On va faire la sauce. La okay. sauce, mais il faut bien expliquer dans la casserole ici. Ça demande de, de, de pan. Tu me parles en anglais? Yeah, you need to explain. Yeah. yeah. It's very important after to put the tight on the bottom and the leg, you know, and, and. He wants me to make sure that I explained to you, although he was just saying it in English, so. Um, is that it's important to put the thighs on the bottom of the Dutch oven because that's where the bone is. Uh, and then the legs go on top. Um, that the order that you put them in the pan, it's really just a flavor thing. It's not going to change radically the success of the dish, but it's really just a... Uh, uh, sure that the aroma the juice you know, and the coloration is the same. And that you have that incredible flavor. Um, so we're going to now make the sauce. It's now, coloration. French sauces, especially like these hearty style French sauces that are more from Northern France. This is not French Riviera cooking. This is more Northern French, like Lyon. Yeah. Um, I do believe that Coco Vin started in Lyon, but don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure. It wouldn't surprise me though. Um, this is more Northern French cooking, so there is more butter. If you are an avid reader of my blog, you know that I don't cook a lot with butter. I do a lot more olive oil because we love to do French Riviera cooking. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, it's just a bit lighter for every day and also has a lot of Italian inspiration and French inspiration and Greek and Northern African all mixed together for French Riviera cooking. Um, but this is more of one of the typical uh, Northern French recipes that does require some butter. So I have another little Dutch oven. We use a Dutch oven for basically everything. Um, I love my Dutch oven collection. We've been building it for years. Um, this, this pan is two years old. The red pan is like 10 years old. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Yeah, they keep forever. So, um, thank you. So I'm gonna put two tablespoons of olive oil and I'm gonna put it on medium high heat. That's two tablespoons. Merci, this is my favorite part of the recipe, butter and onions, <laughs> butter and mushrooms, right? Butter and mushrooms. So the question is, uh, if we can't use butter, what do we use? Yeah, just, just the olive oil. Just the olive oil will be perfect, you know? Why we use butter in this case? We are going to have a, a glaçage with the sugar to be sure the coloration is more brilliant, but it's already gourmand. You don't need to have this brilliant. This is why no butter if you don't need. If you don't want, just olive oil, nothing else. So I'm going to do something that is going to make my mom gasp. I'm going to put the entire stick of butter in there. <laughs> voilà. That's what really, <laughs> that's how you get really that um, shiny brilliance in your French sauce. Yes, Northern French cooking uses a lot of butter, but it's so good. It's worth it, right? Someone else says, I gasped. Oh, actually, your mom, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that is my mom. That is definitely my mom. Um, um, there's an entire stick of butter in there. And then I'm going to add in the pearl onions. Um, we're going to leave them whole today? Yes. Yes. So not now, not now. one Wait trick for um, pearl onions, because they're really annoying to peel, if you are going to try and peel a whole pearl onion. See the pearl onions, they're absolutely tiny here. If you don't have pearl onions, you can use shallots, you can use any other small onion. Um, pearl onions look really nice and I like how tender they are. But one trick to peel them is to put them in cold water and bring them to a boil for a few minutes. And then they just peel perfectly. So, um, yeah, just, just for exactly four minutes after ebullition. Mm -hmm. And it's very nice, you know, they came like that. Why well, they have the skin on, skin on, uh, departure, you know, cold water. Mm -hmm. Skin on, departure, you know, with cold water. And after when you just, you know, take off the bottom like that, tack, hop, after it's it's coming directly, you know, and we have a nice uh, problem. Hop, et voilà. <laughs> Merci, mon amour. Je peux ajouter you les onions, non? Oui. You can use normal, uh, normal <laughs> onions if you don't have this one. Yes, yes. yes. You, you but the, but this one, you know, the, the fact of the smaller one is that they are going to car caramelize and it's almost the same size of the button mushroom, you know? Mm -hmm. It's an aesthetic effect. Um, so I'm going to add in the pearl onions here. Where do you get them? 
can you get them like at the Whole Foods or? Yes, you can definitely find them at Whole Foods um, okay. or at Balducci's or uh, did we see these at Giants? Sometimes even Giants has them. Yes. Mm -hmm. I got them at Fresh Market, but can you repeat again? So you just cook them for four minutes in cold water or bring it to boil? Yes, you yes. bring them to boil and let them boil for four minutes, yes. Okay, yes. Yeah, so you put them in cold water, bring it to boil, and then for four minutes. Yes. yes. Okay. And then you Thank can you. peel them really easily. Yes. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'm going to do that. <laughs> and, and we also add sugar into the sauce. There's two tablespoons of sugar. Why do we add sugar? For the brilliance, you know. Why? Because the butter and sugar you know, are going to help to have the glaçage. You want to be sure it stays brilliant. So I'm going to mix them all together here. And then we're going to let them saute for five minutes here. What I like about this recipe and the pearl onions, they are whole and they look so beautiful in the... In the final recipe. Yeah. And so what kind of mushrooms? Are they just uh, champignons? Champignon or... So these are just uh, Paris champignons, champignons de Paris, or mm -hmm. button mushrooms um, that you can find anywhere, Trader Joe's, um, anywhere. Um, we have also used wild mushroom mix in the past. In the recipe that I showed uh, on the blog was a wild mushroom mix. You can see nicely here. What's it? Do you think you can use chanterelle if you find yes. them? Yes, you can use chanterelle, you know, it's just less cooking time, you know, to be sure mm -hmm. that they stay well. They're and my they favorite. Stay tight, you know? mm -hmm. But yeah, for sure, yeah. And so we're just going to let them saute for five minutes um, so that they become slightly tender. Um, and then we're going to let them cool slightly, take them off the heat, and we're going to stir in one cup of wine. Now I have an opposite problem where I, Sebastian and I were drinking some wine earlier, um, so I'm not sure I have a full cup that is left, but we're going to see about that. That's Someone is table. asking again about the olive oil. So do you also need olive oil or only butter here? Uh, olive yes, oil olive and oil. butter. Olive oil is nice for me. So two tablespoons of olive oil and a stick of butter, right? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, yes. so I hope I answered the question. Because um, if you, if you, if you put just uh, the butter, you know, it will uh, burn, you know, more easily and quickly. Mm -hmm. With the olive oil, you know, together, you know, the mix is different and it helps the butter mm -hmm. not to burn. I'll so definitely gonna... remember that. <laughs> yeah, it's also in the roasted chicken recipe that we recently posted. Um, it's really good to use butter and olive oil when you're doing potatoes, roast potatoes, because then you have a really nice crispy potato. Mm -hmm. So we use olive oil and butter um, quite often. Also when doing French toast, this one? Yes. Yes. It's a nice way to keep it from burning. Um, Less olive oil with the French toast, you know, for sure, because it's more on the sugar taste and buttery, but mm -hmm. the same. The same. Uh, so do you want to say how you know potatoes are done? I'm just going to pierce it with, oh, he says, no, 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 use a really thin knife. I'm going to use this. This is a pasta twirler. I don't know if you can see that properly. Um, these potatoes are not quite done. Okay. And someone else more. asked about the dried mushroom mix. Have you ever tried it? The uh, dried mushroom mix? Yeah. Well, if you pick no. mushrooms yourself and then yeah, dry I, them. I, ne I never try, you know, it's dry, but the dry I like, you know, when you need to do a mousseline or a farce. And when it's mixed, you know, like uh, with um, chicken or turkey breast, you know, mix very thin and you do an appareil, you know, uh, yes, yeah, mousseline. But when it's like that cook, you know, I find that you have just a, a croquant, you know, in the mouth that is not, you know, uh, the same like a, a fresh mushroom. It's mm. more crunchy then, right? You can try, you can try, for sure. Is now it's okay? nice. Now, now it's okay. nice. Look at that. And so, Anina Bell, you started with the wine now, right? So here. So there's no wine in there yet, but I have my cup of wine, which mm -hmm. I'm going to add in now. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm going to let it. I can go now. Okay, I'm going to turn off the heat, um, and then I'm going to add the wine in directly. Voila. Gosh, it smells so good. 
It smells so good. I wish Zoom could also transmit the smell. <laughs> I know, right? The, the smell of onions and mushrooms and butter and wine is just like life's pleasure. Fine. I'm going to show. Well, I'm sure other people who are cooking are having the same divine smells right now in their kitchens. So, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to let it uh, um, sit here. So the heat is off. Things that you always need to do is to try. Attends, attends. Ah. It's very good because it's it's on the alcohol effect, you know. But you have you know the fat with the butter and olive oil is very nice. This is very nice. Est-ce que je vais le laisser réduire un petit peu plus? Pas maintenant. Quand Pas on va mélanger avec un petit peu de l'autre sauce. In English? Yes. We don't reduce now. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's interesting to mix, you know, with a cooking braising juice of uh, the pan and to reduce, you know, together. Why? Because you have the sweet and all of the taste of the braising juice with this one. This is why it's better to wait. Now it's very nice because you have, you know, this difference between the wine, you know, and the fat, you know, because it's not mixed and emulsion together. Mm -hmm. And it's very fat in mouth, very good, very, very good. Bravo. Ah, thank you. Mm -hmm. That'll be really good with the baguettes as well. Um, are we ready for the potatoes? No. No, they're not ready. Almost getting there. Any questions while we're waiting on the potatoes to come up to boiling or to come up to, to be fully cooked? Yeah, I'm a little bit behind because I have warmed up the butter, but I still have to peel those those little onions. So oh no! Do the butter oh, yeah. first. Do the onions in there, and then the mushrooms, and then the um, the wine, right? And what kind yes. of yes. herbs was it? What was which? Sorry. What kind of spices or herbs with uh, in the sauce? Nothing. None. None, because okay. we're actually going to use a spoonful of the sauce from the Dutch oven. Uh -huh. and add it into your um, butter and mushroom sauce. So okay, we're going to get some of those residual carrots and we're going to get lots of the flavor from the meat and it's going to add into that sauce. So yeah. you will have a few hours of, or an hour and a half of downtime or so where you can leave the sauce to the side um, uh -huh. and then uh, follow along with the recipe. You bring it back up to, to heat um, and then you add one cup of the aromatic garnish liquid from the turkey pot and bring to a simmer together. Okay, and then I have one other question. So because I don't have a Dutch oven here, so I mm -hmm. seared it in the pan and then I transferred it to like an, an oven, um, you know, casserole. Yeah, you roasting pan? Uh, yeah. And then I have to yeah, kind of cover it, like correct? Or leave, do um, I leave it open? You no, you would cover it. You should cover it then with tin foil. Yes, like if that. you don't have a lid. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you can put on the, on the pan like that. Yeah. Yes, I did, yeah. Okay, definitely then cover, cover it with foil. aluminum okay. foil and put it tight. Um, squeeze the <laughs> aluminum foil around it so that okay. there's no air that escapes because you want all that um, the Things vapor in there. there. Okay, yeah, I may have to yeah. tighten it up a little bit. Yeah, I yes. have to get the Dutch oven, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. <laughs> Thank you. It's our pleasure. Any other questions? Oh, yes, we have a couple of questions here. Uh, a lot mm -hmm. about vegetables. Can you use other vegetables? Did you have to experiment with like leek, cabbage, sweet potato, green beans? You can you can use with leek, you know, it will be very nice mm -hmm. with the celery, you know, and uh, for sure. The cabbage, you know, too. Don't forget that the cabbage took a lot of your juice. Is that mean when you are going to sear or make the sauce, you need probably to double because the, the cabbage, you know, it's it will be, you know, very nice, very good, good question, but too much. I wouldn't use sweet potatoes though, because no, sweet no. potatoes, the, no, the... No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh, the it's, sweet potatoes will sweet, make, will make them a mush as well. Yeah, um, and, and it's, it's too sweet because you want the alcohol, uh -oh. you want the, to have the alcohol side and cabbage, amazing, leek, amazing. The sweet potatoes, you know, the sweetness of the sauce with the wine and the mushroom, and we put sugar on it. Don't forget, mm -hmm. it will it will be too too much sugary taste, you know. If you don't put the sugar, 
and don't have the, the wine sauce, you know, probably we can make a dish, you know, with the sweet potatoes, not here with the wine. Okay. Um, we have uh, some other question, which is any suggestions where to buy spices from? We, yeah, but no, no, we, we bought them, you know, with a supplier I have, you know, IGF, International Gourmet Company, but you can find this, you know, at Whole Food. The more important, you know, is that less the spices is mixed, better is for you. Why? Because sometimes if you want to have a Pro Provencal mix, you know, you have a lot of oregano. But I'm, I'm telling you one thing. In Provence, we don't use often oregano. We have a lot of time. Oregano. A lot of rosemary, you know, and mm -hmm. this is our mix. You know, this is why if you buy spice, go to all food, you know, and uh, try to have, you know, uh, um, uh, just the, the spice and you make your mix, you know, is that mean the balance, you know, you can find between thyme and rosemary, it, it's, it's amazing. But all food, I think it's more common. One thing that we have started doing, um, and even if you have just a windowsill, you can grow your own rosemary, you can grow your own thyme, and you can grow your own, uh, yeah. what do we grow? Rosemary and thyme are the ones that we use all the time. And mint, mint and, and mint. For, for and us, mint. it's nice because Finally, we use the fresh because we put this, you know, on, on the big pot and finally, you know, it's... There is nothing that kills rosemary. We've had the same rosemary yes. plant through three consecutive years with winters yes. and, it's the, and the pot is outside and we decorated at Christmas. It's become like this big bush um, inside a big pot on our front stoop. And uh, I go out there and get my sprigs of rosemary every single time. And don't forget that with the weather, if you want to have a hot lemon, you put... Grand Marnier, <laughs> rosemary, lemon, and water, and you have something very nice. Little bit of honey at the end, and voila. <laughs> Sebastian's recipe for a hot lemon in case you've got a cold coming in or something like that. Um, les patates? Bon have you tried this? Mm. Have you tried this recipe with the fish? Um, yeah, this wine, yes, the, the wine yes, sauce. I, I, tried, I, think. I tried one time with a lot. Lot. Oh yes, Comment we did. Yes. We did do that. How do you say la lot in English? La lot. La lot. Uh, la Let's uh, try it. Uh, sorry, sorry I, I don't have the name in English, but yes, this is very nice. A white fish, you know, like that, you can keep the bone in, or you know, to have the smaller, uh, the smaller tail bone in, or the big fillet, you know, without the bone. Very, very nice. We call this lot in French. Yes, monkfish. Monkfish. Yeah. Very nice. And you can try it, you know, the same recipe with monkfish, amazing. Just, you know, don't forget that we haven't done this, you know, but for the fish, it's important to season a little bit, you know, before. And don't try to put too much salt, but for the fish to ensure that it stays tight and it cook well, you need to have a marinade before of 20 minutes with salt and sugar. Let's say you have uh, one kilo of fish, you just took probably uh, 50 grams of salt, 50 grams of sugar, and you put around the fish, you know, to be sure it recovered the skin, and you put directly on the refrigerator for 20 minutes to 40 minutes. After that, you rinse your meat, you know, the fish, you know, you rinse this to ensure everything go out, and you start to cook like that. Don't try to put too much salt, you know, on the beginning because it doesn't help. It's better to have an instantaneous marinade, sugar and salt, 50-50, just for 20 minutes and after you rinse. Thank you. I love how Sebastian always comes up with the recipes. Just, yeah, just amazing. It's, um, it's muscle memory, which is what I find absolutely incredible, is that he has, <laughs> um, you know, from hundreds of thousands of hours of cooking and multiple variations. Um, yeah, he, it's muscle memory for him. So I'm trying to learn as much as possible. And this is the thing that we started during COVID, which is a lot of fun, is that uh, I would sit down and write down his recipes as he's cooking, because it's all off the top of his head, but they're not written anywhere. And so that's what my project for the Chef's Wife blog has been, is really writing down his recipes. For our children is how it started, really. And then I realized other people were interested in it as well. Okay, so he's taken the um, turkey out. We're gonna say it's been an hour since we put in um, the turkey. It hasn't, but you would leave an hour normally. Yeah. 
Thank you. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually take oh, thank you. the pieces out um, so that we then put the other pieces on the bottom because our Dutch oven is not big enough that all of them are submerged in liquid and we want to have that dark whiny color. Um, you see. To bring the, 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 my cameraman is going to bring this over. <laughs> okay, so you can see the, the the leg here does not have a lot of color to it from the red wine sauce. However, the thigh that was at the bottom has a lot of color to it and it's really nice and whiny. Um, so I'm just going to put the thigh or the leg on the bottom so that it gets that really so deep wine color. Like and this one I'm just going to turn over. To be and sure. Turn the wing over. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Have you tried this uh, recipe with the venison? With venison, someone was asking. We have not. Uh, Est-ce que tu as essayé? Je sens que j'ai essayé une fois. Du sanglier, yes. Avec du sanglier, bien sûr. Avec du sanglier. Wild boar. Bien sûr. <laughs> I don't know. You, you, it's a, it does exist in America? Wild sure. boar? Yeah. I think mm -hmm. so. Not nearly as much as in the south of France. Sanglier, the south of France, yes. uh, sanglier. If you, have, if you have a sanglier, comment on dit sanglier? Wild boar. Wild boar. If you have this, Oh, very nice. Avec un sanglier, very nice. And this is what's, uh, the braising technique is great for all of those um, uh, hardier meats and gamier yeah. meats. You you will want to braise them or else they're just way too tough. You cannot do a uh, venison steak as well. It won't be as tender. Whereas if you're braising venison, that's just such an amazing way to eat it. Yes, but venison, yeah, you can do this for sure. Very mm -hmm. nice, very nice. And lots of uh, wild boar in Texas, actually. Mm. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Another reason to go to Texas. Oh, babe. yeah, we need to go in Texas. I think he would love so Texas. So many reasons He's to go been. to Texas. <laughs> Always good. So what okay. are you going to do with the sauce afterwards? So we're going to add a cup of the aromatic juice from the bottom of the top vin that's in the oven. And we're going to add it in and we're going to reduce it. Um, mm -hmm. And then we're going to pour it over the turkey. But for that, you will have to wait for two hours, right? For the turkey yes. to cook. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, we cooked one in advance. So we're going to be able mm -hmm. to do that for you while we're showing you live. Um, mm -hmm. But yes, that are cooking at home, you will do this in two hours time when okay. your turkey oven is ready. So Sebastian has a, a tip for, I mean, do not do this at home. He's taking a hot potato directly out of the water um, and he's peeling it there. He, it's much easier to peel a potato when it is um, yeah. after it's cooked, but I cannot touch a potato that hot. It's, yeah, deathly. Well, um, it's one cup of, of milk and one stick of butter. So mom, yes, we are using another full stick of butter here. Um, but they're the best mashed potatoes that you've ever had. They're so buttery and delicious. and You'll notice there's very little spice to them. It's really just salt. So it's all about tasting um, the real flavor of the potato. Where did you learn to do potatoes like this? On apprentissage. Atelier Le Rousse in Bandol, in a training, you know. Very nice hotel in the south of France, in front of the sea, five star. And, and I start to, uh, to cook over there, you know, it was, it was interesting because at the time, you know, we, we, we were working probably 16 or 18 hours a day. And yeah, we don't have choice, you know. And we enjoy that. It was, it was very good. Okay, so we cook wine, right? So does alcohol actually evaporate? Yes. But don't forget that this one, it's not cooked yet, you know. You are going to cook later. But the alcohol, you know, evaporates for mm -hmm. sure. This is why this one, because it's not cooked, we have this very alcohol test. It's very nice. Oh, we are going to we are going to reduce it. We're going to cook yeah. it. Est-ce est que je le mets à chauffer maintenant? Non. Non, non. C'est à quelle heure le So, is the sauce Et being cooked right now? Oui. Non. Uh, no, it is just resting. Okay. It's just resting, resting and we're going to cook it for five minutes. We can... We can yeah, just for five minutes. We can start now, you know. Right. And we are going to show you... Let me finish this. And we're going to show you the sauce with the cooking uh, braising sauce. Yes. Okay. Let's see. So I'm going to bring this up to a simmer. So this is our sauce that was just sitting here without any heat. And you can see the butter is made like a nice little coat here. 
trouve c'est important de montrer. Je montre. Voilà. <rire> um... I love that Le Creuset Pots work on induction as well. That's nice. Um, yeah, that was a decision-making factor for us with the number of Le Creuset Pots that we had. So we're bringing this up to a simmer. And I try not to make let it get too hot. I don't want it to be a rapid boil. You just want it to be a light simmer. And we're going to use some of this sauce. Okay. You know what? Should this is what? Oh shit! Okay. So if you see the, the ebullition, you know. So imagine this is two hours in, right? Um, and that you have your coco van. This is the one that we prepared in advance. So those that are cooking along with us, this is the coco van that you'll pull out in after two hours of cooking time. Not the coco van. Sorry, the turkey van. Thank you. And I'm going to use an entire spoon of the sauce here with the onions and carrots. Oh my gosh, the meat is falling off the bone. I'm picking it up with a with a ladle. Um, there, I'm going to do this. One. Je mets encore. Oui. Vas-y, vas-y. Deux. Voilà. Do another one encore. for good measure. So uh, I'm getting in here the spices and the carrots as well. Uh, there we are. And I'm going to give it a little stir. And we're going to let it reduce for five minutes. It's going to do a light simmer here. Thank you. And while this is reducing, while this is reducing, we will um, do the mashed potatoes. Is everyone following? Sorry, that was maybe a little bit confusing because we have the cocoa van that's already done. No, I think it's clear, right? So you wait for two hours when it's cooked. After you take two big spoonfuls of the sauce and add it to the wine sauce. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have normally started the wine sauce, the mushroom sauce, let's call it. You wouldn't have normally started that until mm -hmm. um, your turkey oven is almost done. And so he's just giving it a little stir, oh, and it's no, at a can, rapid boil. You can start here. before, and you can sit. You know, it's it's. Uh, you can start before. You can sit like that. You know, it's, it's not going to hurt it to sit. The color change. I don't. I don't see if you remark the color change. It was more on the on the um, red. You know, very vif. Mm -hmm. uh, bright red. Bright. You know, bright red. You know, mm -hmm. not cook. And now with the cooking juice, you know, it's more. You know, on the side of a nice uh, Bourgondie, you know? Bourgondie, yes. Bourgondie. So for the mashed potatoes, um, tu me fais pas de, de plus? Tu peux faire de plus. Okay. Mais si, if you don't want to put too much uh, butter, you know, you can put, you know, just olive oil and fleur de sel and use a fork yeah. and pack, 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 you know? Hop. No. Just. We can't see. Oh. There we go. Voilà. Yeah. Thank you. Just, you know, with a fork, like that, oh. To crush it. You crush it. And if if it's too much butter, you know, we understand because French, we put butter everywhere for cooking, you know, not in South of France, but, and you just put olive oil and fleur de sel. You want to show olive oil and fleur de sel or with the, with the butter? Let's do it with the butter. Okay. Because I really want the ones with the butter. And uh, what kind of potatoes do you use right now? Good. Good. Yukon gold. Yeah. Okay, thank you. When it's crushed on the forks, it's better for you to put on the small mixer. Can we put the butter in now? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to add the butter in. I'm going to start with half of the butter because we're not using the full six potatoes. If you were using six potatoes, then you would use. Yeah, okay. um, you want me to put two more? Si tu veux. No. If you're using six potatoes, then use the entire stick of butter. I'm just going to use half of it right now. And I'm going to use half a cup of milk as well. And the butter is going to start melting directly in with the potatoes as I'm crushing it. Is, and is yes, the butter, I'm going to add in a little bit of salt. Is the butter salted or unsalted? 
unsalted. I like to be able to add our own salt. We fleur use de sel. Fleur, fleur de sel. Fleur de sel. It's, it's fleur de sel. Un petit, comme mm -hmm. ça. So this is gray French rock salt. Um, fleur de sel. Fleur de sel. Not rock salt. Fleur de sel. Uh, yes. Uh, flower salt or salt flour. And you can see the butter is melting really nicely. Um, I don't even have to mix it that much. And in order to get, so these are absolutely, absolutely delicious like this, um, but to get those Michelin star potatoes, we're gonna put them in the mixer. Um, someone has a question. Uh, so mm -hmm. do you recommend, is there any special brand of butter you would recommend? Someone tries Danish or Irish and they taste sweeter and lighter. I actually also like Irish butter, but what do you prefer? French. <laughs> Belle <Yeah. laughs> we love. Um, it's hard to find. So Sebastian just gave me a Marie's. So this is a, how do you call it, a spatula in English? Um, can you can use Irish butter, you know, like Kerrygold, you know, here in this case, you know, we, we this use is, Land of Lakes, you know. This is but, simple Land of Lakes yeah. that we found at Giant. And Kerrygold is good. Kerrygold, the Irish one, is very good too. So by switching from the fork to the, um, to the spatula, I'm making a much smoother potato here. I'm going to add a little bit more milk. Et après la sauce, on va arrêter, puis on va montrer aux gens. And if you want to get like the five, the Michelin star potatoes, we're going to put them in the food processor to get that really smooth. Um, yeah. Let's show the sauce. Oh, you know? yes. So the sauce is reducing beautifully right here. And you can see the color, the smell is unbelievable. And I'm going to stop the heat of the sauce. And we're going to try it. Yes. So the mushrooms are really nice and tender. Um, the sauce is still very liquid. See like this? But it is so good. It is so good. Oh my gosh, babe. Wow. So when the sauce was simmering, what was the temperature? What was the heat level? Medium? High. High, okay. Medium high. It has to be at a, um, a lively boil, but not, you know, you're not looking for something that is at full high heat. Um, yeah, the, the sauce reduces about a half. Um, it's five minutes at a lively boil. I'm gonna do the puree. So this, I use this stand mixer all the time. This is a KitchenAid stand mixer. It's on my blog. It's one of my most uh, used items. Um, We've always cooked in small kitchens. This is the biggest kitchen we've ever had. And you can already see it's not a huge kitchen. Uh, and so this stand mixer is amazing because it I, is- I like it like that. <laughs> um, it doesn't take up much space and it's very versatile and it comes with a whole bunch of components. Um, so this is, I'm gonna use the, what's called the food processing arm to it. So I'm gonna put the potatoes directly in there. If you have a bigger food processor, that absolutely works too. And I just add the link to all the essential kitchen tools you are using. So I think some people were asking, so you can just click on the link right now. It's in chat and have access to all Wait. of it. Is that enough? We're going to do it in two little batches. Here you go. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of milk in. A little bit more milk. So we want a really soft potato here. Ah, I'm <laughs> going to try this before you. Tu, tu l'en manques? Ça, ça <laughs> ça, bon. These are amazing. So this is what they look like. Um, very white, pure. And check out that potato. Ça, et ça, bon. And this is just so butter, milk. Ça, bon, ça. <laughs> butter, milk, a pinch of salt, um, and, and the Yukon gold potatoes. Absolutely delicious. Mm. And 
it's what if you go to Michelin star restaurants and you have a beautiful cut of meat, they'll come out with the little um, they'll come out with the little cocotte on the side and it has the um the mashed potatoes in it. We put uh, we put you know the we can do Michelin star service. <laughs> for the sauce and for the, the side, you know, this one. When it's up. And this one for the sauce. Okay. It smells so good in here right now. Do you make? A petite cocotte, oui. Oui. Pour la sauce, je suis obligé de garder le. Alors. In the second batch, you know, you can do the same, you know, it's two times. And for how long did you actually mix? That was like a couple, that was like maybe 10, 15 seconds, right? More, 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 more it, was, than that. it was about 30 seconds. More, more, more. You want it really smooth. Mm -hmm. It looks like pastry. I mean, what does that look like? It looks like buttercream, mm. to be honest. Mm -hmm. It basically is. <laughs> No, <laughs> I did not put my finger in it. I put my finger on the side. Magnifique. Mm -hmm. and you see the difference of the color. Very nice. Now, okay. I'm going to eat this. Sorry. <laughs> it's reduced here, and it, you can see that it's really nice and shiny. Um, the sauce has just been sitting on the side. We have not been touching it. No. For the, for the presentation, you know, mm -hmm. we are going to put, you know, the mushroom. Oh. So Sebastian took the meat out of the Dutch oven. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when your turkey is done, after the two hours, you take the meat pieces out of the Dutch oven and you put it onto a serving dish. Um, and then you top with the sauce, that you have, the mushroom sauce that you have done on the side. Okay. And he's just taking that with a slotted spoon and he's putting it directly on, you're also going to pour that yeah. as well. Yes. And now he's pouring the sauce directly onto the turkey oven. What we can do is a little bit of rosemary. It's outside, yes. <laughs> so this is what it looks like now. Right here. Um, and you have the pieces of turkey uh, on the bottom with the mushroom sauce over the top. And here we have an assortment of breast and of thigh and legs in this one. So really all the pieces of the turkey are great here. You can serve your mashed potato in a side. We like to serve in these little uh, cocottes. These are Mauviel. Um, they're not cheap. They last a lifetime, however, and so if we were having guests over, we would leave one of these at the side of each plate, or we'd serve a, a little cocotte on the side oui, of each plate. Oui, this one. Oui, this one? Non, pour montrer. Ah. Oui, this type of this one. These are, I mean, these are collector's items, uh, the copper dishes that we have. Um, some of them are his grandmother's, and some of them we get whenever there's an opportunity, if there's a Mauviel sale, definitely it's, a, it's an opportunity. And he's just adding a little garnish. And when you want to bring this on, on the, no, dans la salle, I was invité. So if you're serving this for Thanksgiving um, or at, at a dinner party, what he's doing right now is actually lighting the rosemary on fire with a torch. And why are you doing that? For the odor when you're in the Oh, salle. for the, for the odor, uh, the smell um, of the rosemary flambe like that, it's just amazing. And you would so put it right there on the top. Et voilà. Et voilà. Tu viens mon amour. Bravo. On va se régaler. On va se régaler. It smells so good. It looks beautiful. Um, so and that rosemary burning is a great trick. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, one thing I, I find. Yeah. Uh, Sebastian has incredible tricks for presentation from years of being an executive chef in fancy hotels. Um, it's those little present presentation details at the end that I also really try to capture with the blog um, because it's a way that very simply you can just elevate your dining experience to a wow level for your friends or family. So he's just taking out the um, turkey that we put in the oven earlier. 
Je vais montrer à quel point. It's still not done. It, it needs another hour. But you see the coloration is very nice. Because let's. Uh, this is what it's looking like right now. Yeah, I was still, it still needs another the, hour. The first tie to know that we put first bone uh, on the juice and after we turn, you know, you can see the coloration is very nice, you know. Mm -hmm. And the coloration on both sides is very close, you know, to, to the finish, mm -hmm. but it's need to, to finish to cook. This one now, what is interesting is that we can do, you know, and turn this one because this one was on the bottom on the juice. Now we can put skin on the juice to be sure, you know, it's very tasty, very nice. This one can sit, you know, like that. Voila, look at that. Now everything is, is a nice color of wine and we put this back on the oven. So that's an additional step. It's not necessary, but it's also, but it's very nice for getting all the wine color on each of the pieces. Et voila, any questions for, for us? This looks fantastic. My stomach is growling. <laughs> so is mine. <laughs> wow. It looks yes. great. I can't wait for the other hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very nice you know that you have a nice coloration you need to turn it you know it's a very important okay he says you should turn it's it. not Absolutely. unnecessary you need to turn it to be sure it's it's cook on the juice because it's the principle of the braising you know so and how proud would you be to serve this and floor the set on the top and and happy thanksgiving <laughs> happy thanksgiving everyone and um, please do um Share with us if you're cooking this recipe, if you're cooking any of our recipes. We love to hear about it. I'd love to get comments on the blog. Um, and please also sign up for my email list. If you, there's a bit.ly link, it's bit.ly for slash cooking in French. Um, and it will bring you right to a, a sign up for my newsletter. And I, you'll be the first to receive anytime that there are new recipes up on the blog. Um, and also, uh, Anytime there are new blog posts, I recently did a tour of Julia Child's Georgetown Row House that was renovated and has just put, been put on the market for $3.5 million. I was able to have a private tour with the owner and the gentleman who renovated the entire house. And so I'm in the midst of writing that blog post right now. It was, I was a little emotional um, visiting that house um, where she finalized her book, um, Mastering the Art of French Cooking. And that's really in Georgetown. Um, so I will have that up on the blog shortly. So yes, please do sign up for the blog. Tout, tout, toutes les recettes marchent. <laughs> tout, every, all of the recipes on the blog, you know, they're working well. You know, it's not, uh, <laughs> c'est pas approximatif là. Ooh, ça marche, ça marche. So now uh, almost 80 recipes on the blog. So little by little, okay. I'm just chipping away at it. Uh, there's quite a, oh, that looks oh. delicious. Very nice. This is the sauce, the, the mushroom sauce. It looks and, delicious. Uh, very nice. The stuff is in the oven, so uh, yeah. Okay. Very we'll, nice. Uh, wait, 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 how that goes. <laughs> Bravo. Wonderful. Bravo. And so we will be back in December for a um, Les 13 desserts. We'll be doing the 13 desserts, which is a Provençal tradition. Uh, I believe it's the 18th of December, is it? The 18th? Et peut-être, peut-être, peut-être yes. une surprise avec un soufflé. Oh. Mm. Hey, Ross. Cheese soufflé. Mm. Peut-être la surprise du soufflé. Ah, OK. We're signing up for something that I wasn't aware of. Well, here we go. He's making soufflé. <laughs> I'm too intimidated. Perhaps. 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 OK. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. I don't know if you have any final things, Natasha. No, I thank just want to so really thank you both. It was, as always, it's an amazing experience. We learn a lot, and it's just fun, and it's great to watch you cook, and I can't wait to try the recipe myself. Those of you who did, please do share photos with all us, and um, yes, do save the date for December 18th. It's a Saturday afternoon for another amazing dessert, dessert uh, event with Anina Bell and Sebastian, and thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your weekend, and à bientôt. A bientôt. Merci beaucoup. Joyeux fêtes. Bye. Bye. Thank you.